$20,000 just got five letter. years ago. <laughs> Call the 23rd meeting of the 2012-2013 Common Council to order. Will the clerk call, uh, will the clerk read the quote of the day? Thank you, Mayor. It's amazing how much can be accomplished if no one cares who gets the credit. Call the roll, please. Okay. It's not there. There it is. Thank you. <laughs> Mary Lynn? Oh, I am here. <laughs> Who's here Believe you me. Who's here <laughs> 16 present. Quorum is present. Will Alderman Donahue lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> Gladly. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America. America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Looking for approval of the minutes, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, I move to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Is there any changes or additions? See none, clerk will call the roll. Sixteen ayes. Motion carries. City Clerk, is there anyone for the public forum tonight? Yes, there would be. We have a full schedule tonight. Um, first on our list is Henry Nelson. Henry, if you could come up to the mic, please. And Henry, can I get your home address? Uh, my home address is uh, 1926 Settlement Trail, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Mayor Van Akron, members of the Common Council, and citizens of Sheboygan. My name is Henry Nelson, and I am Vice President of the Mead Public Library Board of Trustees. I want to talk to you tonight about the future of our public library. Along with Blue Harbor, the Weill Center, the Children's Museum, and the John Michael Cola Art Center, it is one of the gems of the downtown area of Sheboygan. Every day we have newcomers or prospective newcomers to our city visit our library and they're amazed at the building and the variety of services we provide. From the approximate 1 million checkouts and check-ins to our Jerome Moss Teen Center, to our youth reading programs, to the availability of computer services, not just for games but for research and job seeking, we run the gamut of services for every age and need for over, for over the 43,300 card-carrying patrons. In addition, we continue our collection enhancement. Collection includes books, audiobooks, large print books, children's books, teens books, periodicals, microfilm, DVDs, and of course, e-content material. And as e-books continue to grow in popularity, the allocation of money to the above continues to strain budget. Our goal is to allocate 15% of our operating budget for collection enhancement. But of course, these services and acquisitions have a cost. In an effort to keep these costs affordable to the city taxpayers, we have, over the years, become more automated and more efficient in the delivery of services. In the past seven years, we have re reorganized staff functions and have been able to reduce our staff from 62 FTE to about 42 FTE. A word of explanation, FTE means full-time equivalent. We have 42 full-time positions, but some positions are filled by two or more part-time people with savings because of many of our part-timers have no benefits. We have purchased and installed automated checkout kiosks that have already served over four million transactions since their installation. We are in the process of exploring automated check-ins and delivery systems, but our journey towards more automated handling and efficiency also has costs, capital costs. So, in these budgetary tight times, we are being asked to do more with less. 
the 3% cut in our budget as proposed by the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee will create an additional burden to our already challenged allocation deliberations. And is it fair to the library to have to bear a 3% cut while other city departments will not receive the 3% cut to their budgets? The bottom line will be, will we cut valuable services to our city taxpayers or will we struggle to maintain an adequate and up-to-date collection of materials? That is the question that the library board will deal with in the face of more budget cuts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Next on our list is Mike Brunette. Mike, can I get your home address, please? 1925 South 26th Street. And you will have five minutes, sir. Rolling on, all right. Start with a little look at some technology. Hitler just lost the war, and we just rolled out the new Bell telephone system, portable phone. You can go and dial from a, a phone booth now. Big deal, right? And it's like you go on, but 10 years later, you go through the years, the next year rollout in our big tech issue, Look Magazine, we now have dial O for help. You can dial the operator for the first time. You go a couple of years down the road, it's the princess phone. You go three more years, you have three colors of phones. This is 15 years of innovation in the United States because you have basically zero choice. If you wanted a phone, you got an AT&T phone. It used to be one, it was up to a few models, now it's thousands of models. <laughs> And it's like, and on that note, I have something that I actually talked to Dave Beeble about and have almost all my answers already, but I had in the form of questions about at D-Land Park, the proposed kiosk that's going on there. I think it's a cool idea, and to be able to, to sell stuff there and have little whatever he's going to do and to rent out um, boats and such. But where my concern comes in with things like this is that we have businesses that already do this and it's in a way parasitic, where you have EOS Sports, they're sitting at the mall, and they have issues where they're going, and I, you know, talking to Dave, it's like he's talked to them, he can bring his own proposal up forward, that's his, his business, but in my opinion, when they go forward to something like this, and it may be a nice, interesting idea, and I don't really see any harm in it, but it would be one of those to look at what we already have locally and see if we can work with that, and that's just my opinion, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Next on the list is Maeve Quinn. <clears throat> Maeve, can I have your home address, please? Sure. Uh, Maeve Quinn, and it's 10 St. Clair Avenue, Sheboygan, 53081. And you have five minutes. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Mayor Van Akron and all the persons and citizens of Sheboygan. Um, as I already shared, my name is Maeve Quinn, and I am the president of the Board of Trustees of Mead Public Library. And uh, my colleague, a little earlier this evening, sort of ended his comments with a question for you to consider regarding the future of our fine library. The budget process has certainly been quite a struggle for our city these last few years, and it has impacted our library in recent years. It concerns me greatly that only Mead Public Library has been singled out for a 3% cut to its budget. So before you all consider uh, the decision to cut the library by 3%, I would like to take a moment to talk about the library budget. At a joint finance committee meeting last year, the library board shared with the city finance committee that the continued reductions to the library these last five years has resulted in our 2013 budget allocation being less than what was appropriated to the library in 2001. Now we're in 2013 now, 2001. In 2001, the city funding was $2,575,540. In 2013, the city funding is $2,377,053. This is a net loss of $198,487, 7 percent less. Over the years, the library has taken some steps to handle the budget cuts. All of our employees have had a pay freeze for three years, 2010 to 2012. 
All of our employees have had an almost 2% pay reduction due to furlough days from 2009 to 2012. This is four years of pay reduction. For over five years, our employees have been paying 15% of their health care. And, as mentioned earlier by my colleague, uh, we've had to reduce staff over the years. Back in 1989, we actually had 67.5 full-time equivalencies, and now we are at 43.2 full-time equivalencies. Last year, in response to concern from all the persons at our Joint Finance Committee meeting, the library budget in 2013 did not utilize furlough days to help balance its budget. The Board of Trustees agreed that other cuts would need to be made in, 2013, but in the 2013 budget instead of furlough days. The elimination of the furlough days in 2013 will result in improved access to Mead Public Library for all of our citizens, which is a really good thing. It will also allow our, sa our staff not to experience an almost 2% reduction which they've been having since 2009. All of you already know that citizens greatly value the services of Mead Public Library. I know that you've looked at the numbers. You've probably heard me share the numbers with you over the years. But the numbers really do tell a story. Over 30,000 of our citizens hold a library card, and there are over 340,000 visits a year. And again, I just have to say that number because it's a big number. 340,000 visits. This translates to 120 visits each hour that we're open. This is extraordinary for a city of our size. The citizens are truly using this valuable city service. So tonight, as you consider the plan or the proposal to, put, to cut the library budget by 3%, I've attempted to really follow the mission of the Mead Public Library, which is to inform, educate, enlighten, inspire. Thank you. Thank you, Maeve. <coughs> and lastly, it'll be Jack Vanderweel. Jack, can I have your home address, please? Yes, N7012 Riverwoods Drive. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. My name is Jack Vanderwill, a 24-year dedicated employee of the City of Sheboygan. I would like to speak about the HR salary and grievance recommendation um, <coughs> about the matters laid over 8.2. This proposal is creating a new salary range. This will lower all pay ranges for existing employees. I'm guessing that over half of the current employees will be redlined. If a person deserves a merit raise, these redlined employees would only get a half of a raise. This would be in the form of a bonus check. The base pay will never be raised. This amount is what retirement and Social Security rates are based on. In my case, even if I work another 10 years, my three highest years are behind me. Also, with Act 10, I am making 10% less than I was before. Governor Walker asked for two things, that employees pay for over half of their, half of their retirement and 12.5% of their health insurance costs, which we are doing. Since Act 10, the city has added another 13 things to take away pay and benefits. This would be number 14. Please don't penalize your existing experienced employees. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jack. And that'll be it. Thank you. On our mayor's announcements today, um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Dave Beeble, the head of our public works department, and all the employees from public works. Uh, the big storm we had last week was something that we haven't had for quite a while here in the city. And I stopped down and saw the guys on the second day. And there was a lot of tired people there, a lot of people that had put in a lot of time. Uh, I want to thank the citizens for their patience. Uh, it was trying for all of us. I'm sure we all got calls about how the roads were and things, but I can tell you the guys were out there doing a good job and tr doing their best that they could. I want to thank them publicly uh, for their time and their effort, and again, thank the public for their patience. Hopefully tonight we're not going to get the big storm that they were predicting. It sounds like Milwaukee and Kenosha are, are going to get it. They can have it. Uh, we've had enough for this year. But thanks, guys, for the work that you did. Also tonight I want to thank uh, the fiscal uh, strategic Fiscal Planning Board that met last week and set some goals for 2014. You're going to be looking at that tonight. Uh, it's establishing that we look at 
and asked the department heads to come back with a 2013 budget, uh, 2014 budget that's the same as the 2014 budget. I think it's a good goal to set. Uh, it's gonna be tough. We have three police officers that are currently under a uh, state grant and we don't wanna lose those and I hope that in the next few weeks or months we can figure out ways to both keep those police officers online, uh, continue to fund our library and continue to fund things like our senior center, but still be able to keep our taxes and our, and our fees at the rate that they are currently. Um, so thank you guys for starting out ahead of time and setting a good goal, um, but there's a lot of work to be done yet and uh, good for starting out early. I also want to thank Alderman Bourne uh, for that night. He brought in some information about um, our health insurance and our premiums on the health insurance and how they related to uh, other cities and throughout the whole nation and, and our health insurance benefits and how our rates compare to <coughs> others. I think that's one place we need to look. Um, thank you for bringing that information forward and, and presenting that to the committee is one thing that they should take a look at and we should all take a look at. Any other ideas in the budget, please feel free, uh, all of you, please feel free to uh, forward those things and we'll continue to pass them on to strategic and to finance and the committees as we work through this budget. Consent agenda, 2-1 through 2-7. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and adopt all our O's, all committee reports, and pass all resolutions. Under discussion, Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would uh, move that 2.2 uh, be pulled for a separate vote. Second. It's been moved and seconded that 2.2 be pulled for a separate vote. We'll vote on that, that one first. Under discussion for 2.2, a resolution from Alderman Hammond, Heidemann, Van Akron, and Vander Weele establishing guidelines for department submissions for the 2004 budget. Alderman Donahue. Um, thank you. Um, while I'll be uh, voting uh, for uh, this particular resolution, um, my concern is I have had a number of phone calls from folks who think that the city budget has already been passed. And I think it's real important for us to keep in mind that this is an initial um, shot over the bow, as it were. As Mayor Van Akron said, I think it's an excellent start to the budgeting process. When I, as a brand new alder person, went through the budgeting process last year, um, I was concerned about the, um, what I would call budgeting for dummies. Um, and by that I mean that there, uh, at important times in the budget process, there did not seem to be enough information uh, available to us. And so we walked that fine line between being a policy setting board and not being inundated with figures, and on the other side, being presented with two columns of numbers and saying, this is what you get to vote on. So just to bring into sharp relief that this is the beginning of our budgeting process, no decisions have been made. The council has a real critical role in how the budget is developed and, ev and uh, eventually passed. And uh, just to reassure folks that the budget's not done, figures are not cast in stone, and we do have an important role as council people uh, in terms of um, uh, making decisions about um, our budget. Thanks. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, um, and I just want to echo that as chair of the Finance Committee um, and chair of Strategic Fiscal. Um, this is the early stages of this process. Um, again, we have to start somewhere, and this is where we're starting um, with all the departments. This budget will make many, there'll be many changes and many morphs to this thing before we hit next November. Um, so I do want to put, as uh, Alderman Donahue uh, had indicated, everybody's mind at ease. There is no preconceived notion. There is no hidden agenda here. We wanted to start the process early, as I wanted to last year, um, because we know these things get messy and convoluted, and we wanted to make sure we have the time to do it the right way. So um, again, I'm supporting this um, because we need to start somewhere, and this is the, uh, a place to start. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. So we'll be voting on 2-2. First, and the motion is to accept and adopt the committee's report and pass the resolution. We should probably get a motion from somebody. 
she wants a separate motion sure. on this one. To pass the resolution? Yep, absolutely. I uh, move we put the uh, resolution upon its passage. Second. It's been moved seconded to have the resolution be put upon its passage. Any further discussion? You've got lights. He's got a light blinking. Yeah, he wants to talk on something else, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> Clerk will call the roll. Sixteen ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Raisler. Thank you. Beeping away here. <laughs> I'd like to uh, pull two seven as well. It's been moved in. Second. Seconded Second. to pull two seven forward. Alderman Raisler, under discussion. Uh, under discussion. Um, I. I Obviously, live in uh, in District One uh, with the Eisner Avenue project, and I've had a lot of constituents call regarding uh, not necessarily questions, but just some of the uh, assessments that were done. And uh, they talked with Attorney McQueen and understand that everything is legal to do. I, I don't doubt that. It's just that some of the things seem um, for the residents and myself to be not quite fair with some corner lots and some property that abuts the city and stuff like that. Some constituents, so I'm not going to support uh, support it. Thanks. All right. Any other discussion on 2-7? We'll need a separate motion then on 2-7 from Public Works. I'm Alderman Bellander, I'm sorry. Uh, I've got a question for Attorney McLean regarding this. Uh, I too live in the first district and have shared the same kind of uh, phone calls and questions regarding the project. When the residents have the opportunity for the public hearing, were there, will there be any, um, any, um, type of action based on the, their concerns, complaints, issues that they are brought up? Will they, will, will they be addressed separately at that, at that point in time and getting back to them? Or is passing what we're about to pass, um, does that set in stone no matter what, they, what grievances are heard at the public hearing? It doesn't really matter because we've already passed this. City Attorney? Um, this resolution is to <coughs> declare city's intent to exercise the police power to levy special assessments. It doesn't set the assessments, the specific dollar amount for the assessments that, that is yet to come. And there is a public hearing on that and the uh, citizens will have an opportunity to speak and the council will have an opportunity to uh, adjust them if they, if you see fit. Um, bear in mind that the, it's an expensive project and the costs are gonna have to come from somewhere. And uh, special assessments in the past have been viewed as a fair way to, to do it, but uh, that's something that the council decides on. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I hate to put my uh, colleague on the spot, but if maybe Alderman Riesler could explain what some of the issues are specific to this project, I'd, I'd be greatly appreciated. Sure. Alderman Riesler. Some of the issues, that, and again, as Attorney McLean can maybe enlighten too, properties that abut the city-owned properties that are on Eisner Avenue actually are responsible for the, um, the curb and gutter and, and different things that we have to do. Um, my neighbor specifically uh, is, is gonna be responsible for, for property that number one, he doesn't want, uh, number two, it isn't his, it belongs to the city, um, but because he is right next to and abuts that land um, where the new construction's gonna go, he's responsible for the snow shoveling, the grass cutting, and, and also the $10,000 roughly assessment for it. So uh, again, Perfectly legal, but just the way that it goes, just uh, it, it's kind of a tough pill to swallow. So, that answer your question. Thank you. Any other questions? We'll be voting on two seven. The report of the committee to accept and adopt and pass the attached resolution. Clerk, will call the roll. <laughs> David. I'm clicking it and it's not going. Corey, it's all your fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's an omen. It's an omen.
clerk will call there's the roll. The, there's <laughs> always paper. I always have paper. All right, this is on 2.7. Ellinger? Aye. Foran? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Cott? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 15 ayes and one no. I'm sorry. Did you say no? Did you say no or yes, Scott? I said aye. Yeah. Ah, that's what I thought. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, no, that's all right. The motion carries. Now we'll vote on 2 1 through 2 6, minus not including 2 2. Is there any discussion on those? <clears throat> I'm not used to this. Clerk will call the roll somehow. Somehow. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Cott? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Matichak? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Wandeman? Aye. And Bellinger? Aye. Seen aye. Motion carried. 3 1 and 2, 3 2 will be referred. Reports of committees 4 1 through 4 5 will be referred. Resolutions introduced 5 1 a resolution from Alderman Hammond providing the sale of $3 million water utility revenue bonds. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, is there any uh, information on uh, what the interest rate is going to be on these bonds? Have they, are we just proposing the sale, or has it already gone through? Uh, Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, I don't believe the interest rate's been set. That gets set when the um, bond actually goes to issue. Um, I don't know if we do. We have a date for that yet. April third, April and that's when the interest rate would be um, done in the auction. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, Alderman Board? No, that's it. Oh, Any questions there. of the council? There. Hearing none, the clerk will call oh, the roll. We'll do the clicker. We'll do the clicker. <laughs> We're back to the clicker. Back to the clicker. Modern technology, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> 16 eyes. Motion carries. <clears throat> 6-2, report a committee from Public Works recommending and setting a deadline for April 1st. No, no, 5-2. I'm sorry, 5-2. 5-2, a resolution by Alderman Van Dewey authorizing city attorney to engage in services for outside legal counsel to represent the law and licensing committee and the council on a quidditial hearing of Abbey Taxi. Alderman Van Dewey. Thank you, I move that the, actually I would like to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules under suspension only. We'll vote on the suspension. Clerk, call the roll. Sixteen ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Van Der Willey. Thank you. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? See none, clerk will call the roll. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 5-3 will lie over. 5-4 through 5-6 will be referred. 6-1 committee reports from law and licensing recommending denying taxi license number 9779. Alderman <coughs> Vanderwilly. Thank you, move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted under discussion, Alderman Vandeleur. Is Cara Reesberg here this evening? She is not here. Um, we had uh, invited her to our meeting twice and she did not show either time. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. Sixteen ayes. Motion carries. Six two. Committee report from Public Works recommending setting a deadline of April 1st, 2013 regarding the vacant shanty at structure at 705 Riverfront. <coughs> Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the committee report be accepted and adopted. Under discussion. 
Alderman Versi. I will just quick put this out there. Um, it is, we had a big outcry for this the last time we talked about this. There was an anonymous person that was supposed to step forward, never did. The reason why we're doing this is uh, numerous reasons. First of all, the city doesn't have money to restore it. Um, the interested parties that we did have, everything fell through with them. So we needed to put a deadline to save the city money for one, and also to kind of push if, if someone wants to step forward and take care of this property, uh, they have until April 1st to do so. so thank you. Thank you, Alman Versi. Any other discussion? See none, clerk will call the roll. 15 ayes, one no. Motion carries. <clears throat> 6-3, committee report from Public Works recommending filing documents submitted to communication from Patrick Carroll requesting permission to set up a kiosk at D-Land Park. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the committee report be accepted and adopted. Is there any discussion? See none, clerk will call the roll. 15 ayes, one no. Motion carries. 6-4, committee report from law and licensing denying taxi driver license number 9870. Alderman Vandeville. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the R committee report be accepted and adopted. Is Derek West here this evening? He is not here. Um, after the police department gave a negative recommendation, we voted five to zero to deny the license. So any discussion under the committee report? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 6-5, committee report from law and licensing recommending denying taxi license number 9865, Alderman Vandewil. Move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vandewil. Is Renee Oakley here this evening? She is not. Um, we also had negative recommendation for her from the police department, and we voted nine or five to zero to deny the license. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Sixteen ayes. Motion carries. Six six law and licensing recommending denying beverage license operator license number ninety eight seventy three. Alderman Vanderwil. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderwood. Is Joshua Orville here this evening? He is not. The committee denied him four to one um, based on his recent violations. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. 15 ayes, one no. Motion carries. 6-7, the committee report from salary grievance recommending filing documents regarding extending staffing level limitations now in place for firefighters. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt file. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt and accept the committee report. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 14 ayes, two noes. Motion carries. <coughs> Six, seven, a community a committee report from salary and grievance. Six, I'm sorry. Six, eight, committee report from finance recommending filing resolution stating the city of Sheboygan shall not be allowed to create any new fees <coughs> or increases. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Then moved and seconded that the committee report be accepted and filed and that the document be filed. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll have the clerk call the roll. Thirteen ayes, three noes. Motion carries. Seven one through seven five will be referred. Eight one on matter slide over. Resolution number 141-1213, Alderman Raisler, Donahue, Vanderlee, modifying city residence requirements to, for all non-represented employees. 
Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that all, that the committee of four, and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Alderman Bourne. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, with the uh, government governor's budget proposal to uh, do away with all residency requirements, uh, I was going to make some uh, amendments to this, uh, to this resolution, but uh, I would recommend, I would make a motion that this document be put on hold until June, uh, and then depending on what the governor does, we can take another look at this. So I'd make a motion to hold this. Second. It's been moved and seconded to hold the resolution until the end of June, waiting for the state budget results. Discussion on the amendment first. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in chatting with Attorney McLean just prior to the meeting, um, since this would be going to a new council, we would need to um, move that this gets forwarded to the new council. Am I correct, uh, Alderman, or ask me, Attorney McLean? Um, that would be one option. Is uh, if the if the uh, document is still in council at the end of the year, it can't be held in, into the next council year. So you'd need to uh, either you know file the communication, file the document now, and bring in another one in the new council year, or recommend that it be referred to the new council or to a committee of the new council so that it would stay alive. Alderman Bourne. I would make a motion to uh, refer, uh, refer this document to the Salary and Grievance Committee of the new council. Second. It's been moved and seconded to refer this document to the Salary and Grievance Committee of the new council. <clears throat> Under discussion on that motion, Alderman Van Ackeren. I guess I'll need some clarification because I would like to amend the current resolution to basically eliminate the residency restrictions to follow the governor's lead. So I guess I'd have to refer to Steve as to whether I can make that amendment now if th this motion is on the floor or not. Um, I believe the referral would take precedence, but I can double check the code if you like. like. While you're checking, I'll just talk anyways. Um, <laughs> I, again, I, I think we should follow the governor's lead and solve this problem now. We have many positions that we could uh, fill over the next several months while we're waiting for this decision. Um, I think it is something that's coming. The governor has made that clear. Um, and I think this is something that we can uh, take the lead on and, and settle now and let the city move on and let our employees and, and let the city hire the people that are the most qualified for the position. So um, it'd be my intention to solve this tonight to remove all residency restrictions and let the city move forward. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Alderman Raisler. Thanks. Uh, I'm just wondering, can we do a friendly amendment to what Mr. Warren, uh, Alderman Warren had that would basically... Let's, um, let's find out first yeah. which one we're going to vote well, on. Well, or would bring it back to the salaries and grievance if it's needed in the next council in June. I mean, if, if we do an amendment to it that gets rid of the residency pending the governor's decision, it, it can always be brought back at that point in time afterwards as far as if he says and, and it gets washed out of the budget and it's not there, that we can then address it and look at uh, our different proposals that we have. Everything's drawn up for, for some kind of a baseline after a while anyway if we decide we want to change it. Uh, City Attorney? We, the, uh, the motion to commit to a standing committee, which was what this would be, uh, even though it's a subsequent council year, would take precedence uh, at the current time. So if you don't want to do that, if you want to amend the, the resolution before you do that, I'd recommend voting down the motion to refer it then do your amendments if you want, and then you could vote again to refer it. Alderman Bourne. Well, I was just gonna, I was just gonna add to what Alderman Van Akron said, and that is just because this is in the budget, this budget <coughs> that the uh, governor gave to the legislature is basically a draft and uh, it's far from a done deal just because it's in the budget. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of discussion on this. It could even be pulled from the budget and made into a separate bill. 
and you know that may not be passed until who knows when, the end of the year, but just because it's in the budget, it's a long way from being passed. It's a draft, basically a draft that the legislature is going to be wrangling over. The budget does have to be passed, I believe, by either June 1st or June 30th. Uh, so really, we've only got a couple months. Uh, being that it's so close, uh, that's why I'm making the recommendation that it that we refer it to salary and grievance in the uh, in the next council. Thank you, Alderman Donahue. Uh, and I'm uh, just a little confused in the parliamentary thicket. We have two motions to amend currently pending. There's the motion. Was was the first amendment? The f the first amendment was to change his motion to. Um, to send it to a committee in June in, in of the new council of the and yeah. that is still pending that we'll have to vote on first and then there's another motion however to actually do that to actually do that and um, I think in, procedurally I don't know quite how we make our way out of that particular maze but I would strongly support Alderman Van Akron's um, analysis here um, it is in the budget why something like this would be in a state budget document, I have no idea, but it is. I've reviewed the language of the, um, of the proposed uh, change to Chapter 66. It has the advantage of being very clear, very straightforward, and I think solves for us, so even if it is not part of the state law, state statutes at this point, it solves a really pressing problem for us now, which is we have some critical positions that we need to fill. The residency requirement is clearly getting in the way of us hiring the best people. Not talking about department heads, but if we can, um, if, if we get our way past these, and I, I believe I will vote against both of these particular motions, even though they seem to be kind of competing, um, with the hope that we can get to um, Alderman Van Akron's um, motion, subsequent motion to, uh, to amend. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I too won't support sending this on to the next council. I think it's important that we try to solve this problem here tonight. We do owe it to our employees and I think we owe it to the city. Um, I think it is time that we again put the city first and, and let the city department heads pick the best qualified candidates for these positions no matter where they live. Again, I choose to live here, we all choose to live here because we love living here. Um, but at, at the end of the day, if that's hurting the city, I think we need to put that first. But again, in fairness to our employees, we have employees who are trying to meet these residency concerns that currently are trying to sell their homes. I don't think it's fair to just put that on hold for a few months and let the governor solve their problem. I think it's something we can handle here tonight, so I would urge everyone to vote. Uh, no to moving this along to the next council and let's handle this here tonight So first we're going to vote on the amendment to uh, Alderman Bourne's original motion to send it to Committee of the new council salary and grievance Salary and grievance committee. Can we do this all in one motion or are we doing it in two? Asking your advice. Well, I it's competing I believe motions. the motion on the floor is to commit it to a standing committee, which is the Salary and Grievance Committee of the New Council. So that's the one and only motion that's, we need. That's, that's, the, that's motion. the motion on okay. the floor, I believe. Okay, so we're voting on whether to refer it to Salary and Grievance of the New Council. Ready to vote? Sure. Okay. You're ready, we're ready. We're ready. Five ayes, 11 noes. Motion fails. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Then I would make a motion to amend the resolution to eliminate all residency restrictions for all city employees. Second. Second. And move and second to eliminate, to amend the resolution to eliminate the residency requirements for all city employees. Does that include department heads or yes? Any discussion under the motion? Alderman Bourne. Is this, is this a motion to the original document 8-1? Is that what we're talking about now, Alderman yeah, Van Akron? It's an amendment to that. It's an amendment to that. Well, I'm, not gonna, uh, I'm certainly not going to support uh, uh, not, having the department heads, not having the department heads live in the city. 
And uh, according to the governor's language, that would also mean that the negotiated residency requirement that we have with the fire department would be null and void. And I have a real problem with uh, uh, any more firefighters living out of the city than or already do for being able to respond to emergencies in a prompt in a prompt matter. Uh, I don't want, you know, I don't want firefighters uh, uh, responding from uh, uh, Oostburg and Cedar Grove and Plymouth and Glen Beulah and Greenbush or north of Sheboygan and Keeler and Holstein. Uh, that is a negotiated uh, residency requirement and I certainly don't want to see that go out for emergency responders. But uh, I'm not going to support doing away with all residency. I might consider uh, doing it with uh, just keeping the department heads as residents. Uh, and I did have some amendments to make regarding the 2% that came up in the regular document to amend that. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna support uh, doing away with the entire residency requirement, including department heads. And you know, and it's not fair, it's not fair to the employees that have decided to live in Sheboygan since his residency requirement went into effect. Most recently, Mr. Beeble just sold his house that was just in the town of Sheboygan and uh, moved into the city. Uh, I, I just don't think it's fair for the people, for our employees that have stepped up to the plate since his residency rule has been in effect and have moved into the city. Thank you. Any other discussion? Can you turn? Um, with respect to the proposed amendment uh, as it relates to department heads, this is a resolution here. Uh, there's an ordinance in place that requires residency for department heads. You cannot uh, repeal an ordinance through a resolution. So you would not be able to uh, remove the residency requirement for department heads in this document. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this question went either for Attorney McLean or Alderman Donahue, who has read the, um, the statute or the, the proposal from the governor. Does it, does it, the state mandate address anything as far as department heads? Or if we pass, were to pass something tonight that said department heads were, um, they had to maintain a residence within the city then the state further on passes what they're going to pass would that override what we've just done you know what we have done today i guess i i'm getting, trying to get a clarification of the language what's included or what can we do and can't we do and what are the ramifications down the road city attorney uh, thank you uh, mayor um, right now the structure locally there's no state law with respect to residency requirements of local government local government employers. Uh, we have an ordinance that's in place that uh, says all department heads have to reside in the city. That ordinance defines the department heads to be five, fire chief, police chief, director of public works, director of human resources, uh, and director of finance. Uh, this is a resolution before you, uh, you cannot repeal an ordinance through a resolution. If you want to change the ordinance for department heads, you have to bring in an ordinance to change that. So this document could not address department heads. As far as the proposed budgetary language that the governor has, that's across the board, no residency. Uh, local governments would be preempted from enforcing any residency requirements for any of its employees, period. Steve, I read the um, League of Municipalities bulletin today in which they talked about we couldn't require residencies, but there was an open question about po uh, possibly having fire and police uh, still be able to, with, without requiring them to, to live in a specific municipality, you could have uh, possibly uh, requirements distant requirements that weren't required residencies. Time, re time requirement right. to get to the job or something like that, yes. So uh, that, that still would be allowed at a, at a later date, even if the governor passed that, that was an open, part of an open discussion for local governments to decide. According to the League of Municipalities, though, how it gets passed, we'll see. All right, Alderman, somebody's beeping, Donahue. 
Um, Mayor, I, I just found the, the league's language which reflects what you said. Municipal policies requiring certain employees such as firefighters or snowplow drivers to be on the job within a certain period of time after receiving an emergency call, that is response time requirements, may be valid because they do not require that the employee reside within the jurisdiction. So that would appear to answer the question, but you never know. Right. Any other discussion? Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I just clarifying my, my motion then is to remove residency restrictions for all city employees except for the department heads who have grown. Is that family. what you'd like it to say? Yes, please. Um, and, and having that understanding, understanding the public protection and safety side of that, that is something we would have to address either way would be the, the time response. That's not something we address currently, whether in contract or not in contract. That is something we'd have to address it is a time type response down the road. So again, I think it's time that the city put this behind us, let the city move forward with the best qualified candidates we can find. Um, and, and again, I think it's, it's in fairness to our employees who um, shouldn't have to wait another four months to just have the governor do this for us. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, you know, in, in thinking of this, um, you know, I'm, I'm one that wants to make sure we have the best employees. Um, I'm also cognizant of the fact that you know, we have several critical functions that need to happen inside the city, police, fire, and, and obviously snow plowing being the, the, the three that come to mind right away. Um, and I, I appreciate Alderman Van Akron that uh, getting rid of the res residency requirement altogether. I'm just wondering if we might be jumping the gun on this one a little bit, and maybe we need to think, um, and I'm not saying drag this out four months, I'm saying go back and have this document the right way, not pass non-residency altogether, and then come back and say, oh, by the way, for you guys now, we're gonna put in a radius requirement or distance requirement or response requirement. Maybe we need to do that right now um, so that um, everybody knows what the playing field looks like after either tonight or after the next council meeting. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. Thank you. Uh, one, thing that I, uh, one thing that I liked about document 8.1 one or 8.2, whatever one it is, is that there was a whereas in there that uh, they're assigning a 2% fee based on earnings for those not relocating within a two year time frame. Uh, I had talked to Alderman Hammond uh, about this and, and in fact expanding that and that uh, what I was going to propose was uh, the 2% fee in pay grades one through eight and a three and a half percent uh, three and a half in pay grades nine through 12 and 5% in pay grades 13 through 16. Uh, basically, I wouldn't have trouble with, with uh, rescinding the residency if we do rescind the residency requirement, but making it a bonus for the people that do decide to live in the city. And, uh, and if they don't choose to live in the city, then they're gonna have some, uh, some uh, pay uh, deducted. I thought that 2% that was good, but I didn't think it was enough for people up in the six, 13 through 16 pay grades who are making well over $100,000 a year. To me, that wasn't an, a 2% penalty. Wouldn't have probably been any inducement at all. Uh, back when this resolution was first passed on residency back in uh, 2008, at that time we had 42% of our city employees who did, did not live in the city. And when this residency requirement came in back in 2008, we grandfathered all of the people that were not living in the city of Sheboygan. And the people who sponsored this at the time thought that through attrition over the years, the residency requirement would be a good way to encourage more of our city employees to live in the city. Uh, if you currently have been following what real estate has been selling for in the city of Sheboygan, uh, it's pitiful. Uh, you, if any of you have access to the Milwaukee Journal on Sunday, I would invite you to take a look at the real estate section. And they, uh, they uh, have a, a page in there where they go over the real estate sales in the five county area around Milwaukee, including Sheboygan. And uh, we have homes selling in Sheboygan and I realize it's a tough market with foreclosures and that type of thing. We have, we have properties that are selling for 30, 40, $50,000. The average sale price of a home in Wisconsin in January was $172,000. Uh, 
We, I don't think we had one property except a condominium down next to the armory that sold for $225,000. And uh, at the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee, I brought that fact up, and I believe Mr. Amodio mentioned that that property, that condo down there originally was, was uh, listed at $450,000. It sold for $225,000, and to my knowledge, that's the highest priced property that's sold in the city of Sheboygan this year. We've got, to be, we've got to be encouraging people, whether it be our city employees or anybody else, to move into this city. It's a wonderful place to live. And by not having this residency rule anymore, uh, I'm just afraid that the real estate picture, as far as sales of homes in the city, are going to continue to go down. Uh, it's naturally going to have a bigger effect in Milwaukee where they figure that there's a possibility that 6,000 people could move out of the city of Sheboygan if their residency rule is put aside. It can happen on a smaller scale right here in Sheboygan. So, I mean, the real estate situation in the city is pitiful right now at best. And again, I want to repeat, the average selling price in Wisconsin is $172,000. We've had one property since the first of the year, I believe, that's sold for over that. I mean, it's ridiculous. And to do away with this residency requirement, in my mind, is going to ex exasperate the problem. Thank you. Alderman Reisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to answer Alderman Heidemann's, uh, Heidemann, excuse me, Alderman Hammonds, I think that um, the contracts are still going to supersede what we do tonight. The, the police and fire have in their contracts different residency things Correct? I mean, we, we can't do something to them as far as the contract goes without negotiating it. Well, uh, if you did away with the residency requirement, that would supersede Even though they their have contract. in their contract that says that yeah. they unless either you don't say, have it now or... Unless you just refer to non-represented employees, which is what I would recommend you do. Okay. Uh, I've been around long enough where the council repealed the residency requirement for all city employees once before and then had to, had to pay to renegotiate it back into contracts, and I'd hate to see it just go away again and then have to renegotiate and uh, sure. give something and, again. And then the second comment um, with Alderman Borens, if the governor comes and does take this away, I, I just a suggestion for the next council is you might want to look at an incentive instead of the penalty, you know, where you're going to give them 2% to move into the city um, for the first two years or something of, of their uh, employment or something. That's just a, kind of a suggestion for later on in the future. I think, oh, City Attorney, the, the resolution does talk about all non-rep employees in the resolution on the first line. So I think that's what that's we're just talking about. That's the title. That doesn't, that's not part of the Dave's resolution. amendment said for everybody. The, the amendment, I believe. It's for all, all employees. All was to cover all city employees. Right. Any other discussion? No. Mayor. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I'd like Sorry. to then make that amendment to cover what the document originally covered was the, the non-represented employees. I, if we have those contracts, we'll let those contracts play out, and then we can negotiate that with those entities as, as that time comes. So I, I guess to further amend my amendment, let's go with uh, all non-represented employees. Second. It's been moved, seconded that all that all non-represented employees, we would drop the residency. Correct, to completely remove the residency restrictions for those employees. Under discussion, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just for the sake of, uh, for, for myself and for the people at home, what does that number reflect for the non-representative in versus the representative? What kind of numbers are we talking about? Mr. Modi, you can, or Sandy, do you know about that number? And representative would be? In compared to? About half. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I think at the very least, I think we should, if that's what Alderman Hammond was recommending, that this should go back to committee again. I mean, this has huge implications. And uh, 
I was ready to vote on a document tonight, maybe uh, with some modifications to it, but uh, this has huge implications for what I've, what I've brought up and what other, what other people have brought up. I, I just think it's, it's too soon to vote on this until we've got all of our ducks in a row. Thank you. Any other discussion? Alderman Hammond. I don't know if my light's playing goofy things. Um, you know, again, I, I, I would encourage us to take, again, I'm not trying to slow this process down because I think sometimes we, we move too slow, but you know, we haven't addressed, if we, all the non-reps are, um, you know, are, are void of re residency requirement, you know, again, what do we do about snow plowing? You know, if, if, I think some of these things need to be dealt with before we bring um, a document, and for the record, I'm for getting rid of the residency requirement, um, but I wanna make sure we do it in a way that does not hurt response times, um, you know, in some of our critical functions. And so again, um, uh, I'll support it, but I'd much prefer us see this, send, see this go back to council, make sure we get it right and bring it, or go back to committee, bring it back to council next, uh, whatever that is on the uh, 18th, and uh, make sure we have a document that makes sense and dots all the I's and crosses all the T's. Any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Do you know what you're voting on? What, no. are, we, the, what are we voting? The amendment or the motion is to eliminate all residency rules for non-represented <clears throat> employees. Mayor? To amend this document. To amend this document to can I ask a question? Can I offer a question? Sure. Uh, Attorney McLean, this motion, is this germane to this document? I mean, just, I'm just questioning. There's so much in here that's going one way in this motion. I, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm sorry, but it doesn't seem like it's germane. This may not be the way to do it. Well, I guess uh, leave that to the council, but I think it deals with residency and I would say it falls within the ambit of uh, the proposed resolution to change the residency requirement. Uh, okay. It's kind of far out as far as what was proposed, but. Uh, We've done crazier things. <laughs> All them in Donahue. That's true. <clears throat> Damning with faint praise. Um, based on the the uh, complexities of the issue um, and uh, the fact that it does have fairly wide-ranging impact. Uh, if a motion to refer to uh, salary and grievance for immediate attention would be appropriate, I make that motion. <coughs> Second. It's been moved and seconded to refer to the salary and grievance committee. I believe that takes precedence over any other motion referring it back to a committee. Any discussion on referral? All those in favor of sixth? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, call the roll. <laughs> call I know I have that motion somewhere. Here it is. <laughs> oh, we already did that motion. We already called that motion to refer. That, that was council. for the new council we're talking about. That was for the new council and it failed. So now we're going to send it back to Salary and Grievance, which will meet in the next two weeks and have it back. I mean, we'll have it back to us in the next two oh, weeks. Okay, then let's do another one. Hmm? Correct? Yep, that's right. So this is to send it to the salary and grievance with next week, Monday. to be next week, Monday. Wednesday. How's that? Clerk will call the roll. If you're ready. Just a second. Okay. Oh, wait. Thank you, David. <gasps> okay. I know I had it. <clears throat> Don't sigh. Right here. <sighs> Fourteen eyes, two nose. 
Motion carry, carries, being sent back to the Salary and Grievance Committee. 8-2, resolution 142-12-13 from Alderman Wrestler Donahue Van Wooley adopting revised salary grade range schedules. Alderman Wrestler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Resolution 143-1213 from Alden, uh, um, sorry. 143-1213 from Alderman Wrestler Donahue Van Wooley adopting a revised city Sheboygan compensation program for non-rep employees. Alderman Wrestler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm wondering if could we take uh, 8-3 and 8-6 together? The resolution was reported committee. We will take both the committee report of 8-6 and the resolution from 8-3 and move make one motion. I move that they both be put upon the passage, accepted and adopted. Second. Then move and seconded that the committee report be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage on 8-3 and 8-6. Any discussion? Clerk, call the roll. 15 ayes, one no. Motion carries. 8-4 from salary and grievance. Who met to discuss job descriptions for Department of Public Works. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If it's okay with the Public Works, I'd move that 8-4 and 8-5 are taken together. It's been moved and seconded that 8-4 and 8-5, both committee reports, be accepted and adopted. Is there any discussion? Yeah, they moved and seconded. We don't have a motion yet. Uh, yeah, I move that they be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the both committee reports, 8-4 and 8-5, be accepted <coughs> and adopted. Any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 87 General Ordinance number 481213 by Alderman Raisler, Vanderwille, and Donahue amending the municipal code so that as to delete various positions in the table of organization of public works. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that um, the resolution be put upon its passage, or excuse me, the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 16 eyes. Motion carries. Other matters, city attorney. 9.1 is a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the management services agreement regarding Port View Park. That will be sent to Public Works and Board of Marina Parks and Forestry. 9.2 is an RO submitting a communication from Frank Nobile, a board member of the Rockets for Schools program, confirming the dates for the annual Rockets for Schools program at the Blue Harbor Resort. The event will begin Friday morning, May 3rd, and end at 6 p.m. on Saturday, May 4th. That will be dual referred to Public Protection and Safety and Public Works. 9.3 is an RO submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2013 and June 30, 2014. That will be sent to law and licensing. 9.4 is an RO submitting a communication from Amy Velo, Property Specialist 2 of SBA Communications Corporation, requesting permission from the city to modify Sprint's current equipment configurations for their upgrade in technology regarding the SBA tower located at 3333 Lakeshore Drive. City Plan Commission. Motion to go into closed session, Alderman Hammond. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene into closed session for the item below under exemption provided in section 19.851C for the purpose Excuse of considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which this governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises the responsibility. Second. Then move the second to move into closed session. Clerk will call the roll. Push your clickers, Joe. Sorry, sorry. You're having a sidebar. Yeah, sidebar. 16 eyes. We'll take a five minute recess to allow the uh, gallery to clear.